Today is episode four in the Grief Roundtable miniseries. The topic today is anger. Is it wrong to be angry when someone you love dies? We take the lid off of anger today and discuss the role it played in each guest grief journey. Welcome to the show. This is your host, Teresa Davis. As women, we may not express anger like men, but that doesn't mean that we don't experience anger, especially when it comes to the loss of our children. So Cheryl, I'd like for you to start us off on that. Did you, so we're all believers here. And so often there's this connotation that goes along with, we're just supposed to be, Cheryl, I believe you said it in your video that some people think we're supposed to like wear a mask and act like everything's okay. Well, you you can't do that when your child dies. So share with us anger and, and how you handle that as being a believer. All right. Well, as I shared in the video, There was a very close moment with the Holy Spirit as it came time to release in front. And there was a clearness when we were faced with the decision of when to take him off life support. Um, Hardest decision to make because initially your mind is just picturing that miracle. Lazarus had to die for the miracle to happen. So even though we had heard from two doctors, Brent was brain dead, there was just this, okay, God, like it's in your hands. You're good. You're sovereign. When I was pregnant with Brenton, you were good and you were sovereign. You know, throughout his life, the things that occurred, you were good and sovereign. Just because I'm here doesn't change who you are. But having that Holy Spirit moment felt like um, there was a peace. But as I experienced anger, for me, it was almost at the one and a half year marker where Shannon came out of the gate with the anger, but there was an overwhelming peace. But as I started to feel that anger, I kept feeling like, am I like looking back? Like the Israelites were looking back, Lord, why, where is this anger coming from? Am I being unfaithful? Have I stopped trusting you? Because anger is greater than any feeling right now. And, And just, this is heavy to bear, God, like just going through what to do with that and trying to stuff it, to be honest with you. I, I didn't want to face it because I was, you know, equating it to unfaithfulness or I'm I'm not believing. And that's what's bringing up this anger, knowing the Lord was close to the brokenhearted and the anger doesn't really equal the lack of faith. And as I started to present the anger to the Lord, he said, I gave you that feeling like, don't, if you can't bury it, you can't hide it. Mm. I've created you that way be authentic. You know, I even remember at times in my prayer and journaling, the Lord saying, I know you're angry, get it out, like, be real with it, like, you be real with me. And that's where he could work on the healing. That's where, you know, he he did his best work. And I'll just share with you, initially, one of my go to verses was Psalms 119, 28 through 32. And I think when you read the Amplified Version, it really kind of related to my first year and a half. And it says, my soul dissolves because of grief. Renew and strengthen me according to the promise of your word. Remove from me any falsehood or unfaithfulness and graciously grant me your law. I've chosen the faithful way. I've placed your ordinance before me. I cling tightly to your testimony. And oh, Lord, don't put me to shame. I will run the way you, your commands are with purpose. And you will give me a heart that is willing and I, I could I could hear the cries and relate to every bit of that in that year. But as I felt angry, I felt like I wasn't willing. Well, then at that anger point, I came across the message version. And this really explained where I was feeling. And it says, I am feeling terrible, God. I could not get any worse. Get me on my feet again. You promised, remember? When I told you my story, you responded, train me well with your deep wisdom. Help me understand those things inside and out so I can ponder your miracle wonders. My sad life's a dilapidated, fallen down barn, but build me up again by your word. And I love as it goes on, it says barricade the road that goes nowhere, like those lies, the deceit as you're walking through this. Grace me with your clear revelation. I choose the road to somewhere. And again, I like where it says I choose the road to somewhere because that psalmist doesn't know where it is yet, but it's like that faithful I choose that road, not nowhere, but to somewhere in faith. I post your road signs at every curve and corner. I grasp and cling to whatever you tell me, God, don't let me down, but I'll run the course that you lay out before me. And just as I'm working through that anger, that that it's real, it's something he's given us, does help us heal. Um, So please, I mean, I share with anybody who's in that mode, whether it's early on or late, anger is natural. 
don't fight it, don't hide from it, and don't stuff it. So I'm curious, Cheryl, when, at what point, so this wasn't initial, it wasn't, the anger wasn't initial, it came for you later. How far into your journey did, did the anger come? About a year and a half, and it was as if we were approaching Mother's Day, and I, the anger was just, I will never be a complete mother, even though I love it and am honored by the two children I have, but I just, and I kept processing that it's never going to change. Like 10 years from now, I'm still going to be an incomplete mother. And I, the anger, you know, just went through, I could picture just smashing glass. I don't know if you've ever, guys have ever had that moment where you just can picture a wall of glass and just shattering it. That's like the level of anger sitting in my car with the door shuts and being comfortable, just screaming, like processing it. So that's excellent because you admit that you repressed it in the beginning and then you eventually allowed it to come out. So yeah. Wow. And I love that scripture, especially in the message. That's a good one. I'll have to get that reference from you so I can put put it in the show. I'll I'll put it in the show notes for folks. But so Valerie, did you struggle with anger? Yeah. Yeah. I think very similar. I, it, what is, what helped me is to see that it was like as close to righteous anger as you can get, you know, looking back, but you do feel a little bit crazy because, you know, you feel like that's not an appropriate response or it's not a holy response. But when you, I mean, think about the fact that our children aren't born to die, you know, like, especially in the beginning, the Lord made us to live for eternity and that they were stolen from us. I think it is an appropriate response, but it's like, what do you do with it? <laughs> so what do you do with it? Sure. And just like Cheryl was saying is that we have to just give it to the Lord. I think for me in the beginning, it was, I didn't really take it out on my husband or even my children who, you know, they're just bless them. They were six and four. So life just goes on for them, you know, which in some ways was really helpful, but in other ways it was really hard. Cause you can't just, you know, can't grieve the way you want to grieve when you have little, little ones at home, toddlers. So I would probably take it out on strangers and not really, but like in the sense that you're like, just say something, just say something off, you know, or just, or if I had to be committed to something, I loved that I should just have an easy out. Like, no, we we're doing nothing. We can't, I can't handle that. Like, and I think it was just, yeah, really just a lot of anger in the beginning. But I think what helped me is to realize that it was an appropriate response, just as you said, Cheryl, like it, that is exactly how you should respond when something like that happens. And then kind of what do you do with it once you realize that and let the Lord heal those places. But man, yeah, the anger was definitely where I went to too, which feels weird. Cause I, for my husband and I, thankfully we were always at the opposites, which I think was good, but we were always struggling at different times. <laughs> and so the other one was able to kind of give space or help, but yeah. What struck me when you were describing your journey in your video is the constant setbacks that you guys had, but you just, you kind of just took it all in stride. Um, you had to repress your feelings and what in your emotions, because not only did you have a sick child that was requiring a tremendous amount of your time on a daily basis, many, many, many things. And you, you even verbalized it in the video. It's like, well, then one more piece of equipment, then one more piece of equipment. So you, it was kind of gradual and you didn't realize until it was all over how, you know, how much of this was a part of your life. But I would say for your situation, because not only are you mama, your caregiver, And that brings another layer of grief, I believe, on top of that as well. It's like, you know, you're holding it together because that's what you have to do as a mom, right? You got to hold it together. This is a rough time and I'm going to hold it together. So I could just see an event where you just totally fell apart or blew up. I mean, just all of the repression that you had to go through during that time of being able to care for Nora and then for it ending in a way that, of course, you obviously would have never expected it to end. Um, how did you manage your grief? Did you just, or your anger? Did you just talk about it or did you just, how did you work through it? Yeah, I do. I, that's a great question. I I hadn't, I love the way that you worded all of that because it was such a joy and we found our identity kind of in being, you know, special needs parents. Like, and now even being in Facebook groups, we're kind of like, can we stay in there? Like, where, what are we? We don't know. It feels weird. And we just loved that. It was such a joy to care for her. Never. I mean, and I don't mean to sound trite, but it really wasn't a burden. You know, it really never once did we think this is a hard life. And then now looking back, we're like, we were crazy, you know, with two toddlers and then a special needs baby. But yeah, I, 
That's a great question. I, I, I'm not really sure how to answer that, honestly. Well, it sounds like you, you said you and your husband talked about it. So I guess you guys just kind of yeah. worked through it together. You allowed each other to be in different That's points. Exactly. Say. We've always been super communicative, like maybe overly. And so I think that honestly, that's kind of been our thing as a team is we talk about everything, maybe too much, <laughs> might be too much for some people, but I think that really has gotten us through it. Like, these are the thoughts I'm having. This is where I'm at. And I really think that probably is what helped us a lot when we're, and, and to have someone say like, oh, that's not crazy. I thought that too, you know, but me and my husband just to put everything out there and put our struggles out there with each other. And we had friends too, that we could do that with, but I think mostly each other, it was, we were really honest with where we were at the darkest, deepest thoughts we were at with all of it. Yeah. And I think that that helps, especially when you put things in the light anyway, that I think that really made it a safe, safe place for us to be mad, you know, together. And it was okay. That makes sense. Well, that's unique. I hope you know that because of course, you know, our situation, Andrew died very suddenly in a plane crash. And, and I remember I, I was struggling and my husband had a panic attack and I might've not been so kind as you were to your husband. Cause you know, I told him, look, you know what? I barely got my head above water and I feel like you're taking your hand and pushing my head under. So counseling was very beneficial for us in that way. But I think you guys being in a place where you could support each other that way is really remarkable and a gift because that doesn't always happen that way. What about you, Jennifer? Did you struggle with anger? Yeah, but sort of in disguise. I was thinking about it a little, little bit as I was listening to you all talk. In the early days of losing Calvin, I found that I was really angry at other people <laughs> and mainly people that we thought should be walking with us on mm -hmm. this journey that just weren't showing up. And that took a lot of my focus and attention. And I realized at one at some point and definitely now that I think really what was happening was it was easier to be angry than to really deal with the hard, um, the emotional, we, we could shift our focus, you know, to being angry at these people for not mm -hmm. supporting us instead of looking fully at what had happened to us. And so that was probably the main expression of anger. Of course, you know, like others have said, just dealing with, you know, God, you're good, but this isn't good. And, you know, and how could you have allowed this to happen? How, how could this be your good plan? But, you know, I, once I got past the initial stages of not being able to read God's word, I poured myself into it, just trying to figure out who is this God, because he's not who I thought he was. And, mm -hmm. and just getting to know him all over again and found so much comfort in books like Job and, and the Psalms of lament and lamentations where we see that it is healthy and right to express these really hard feelings to God and, and that he can take it, you know, and Job says, I just was thinking of it and just pulled it up. But in Job 10, he tells God, you know, I hate my life, the hands that made me, you've now destroyed me altogether. Like these are his mm -hmm. words and, and, and they're okay <laughs> because they're there and, and God allows them. And one of the things that Eric and I have talked about is, you know, Job is over 40 chapters long and God could have said the story in like five but there's over 30 chapters of Job and his friends going mm -hmm. back and forth. And most of it is Job pouring out his complaint to the Lord. And then Lord comes in at the end and reveals himself, but he allows Job that time. So I think it's right and healthy to process all of our emotions and, and anger is definitely one of them. I just interviewed um, a psychologist on complicated grief. And one of the things he said to me was exactly what you said not only did he allow them lament, he printed it. So not only did he allow it, he allowed it to be in print for us to read it. 38 chapters of lament, and then God showed up in a whirlwind. So I love that you pointed that out, Jennifer, because in the Christian world, sometimes I don't know if any of you guys have experience that. But in the Christian world, sometimes it's, it's almost looked upon like, uh, Cheryl, what you brought up that, you know, anger is equal to unbelief, which is totally not true. What is Tanya, what is your perspective on that? Did you have to manage anger? I think a lot of my anger came 
more with Trafton's diagnosis and there was someone that was very close to him that did not believe in the diagnosis, felt that it was all spiritual warfare. And we just couldn't get this individual to attend, read a brochure, much less attend NAMI with this, or much less read about the addictive brain or just try to learn what we could. And so I think our anger came towards an individual and just that frustration, even on the day that Trafton died, that frustration that the individual hadn't even checked on him that day, even though they knew that he was struggling. So and then he dies and we're forced into this individual's life to come home with us, to be in our home. And David said, we didn't see eye to eye. I agree. We didn't see eye to eye. But God has had to really work in my heart through that. Because, yes, I was angry. Because for many reasons. Were you, you know, did you have any anger toward God? No, because I knew that God was aware of every detail. So I wasn't really angry at him. I just didn't understand. A child's not supposed to. You know, in our earthly minds, the child is not supposed to die before their parent. Mm -hmm. And I just always thought that I'd outlive my kids. And so I wasn't angry. I just didn't understand. We never asked the whys, which I know many people do. Because to us, and as you'll hear in my video, Trafton was rescued that day. He was and I, his, his bright, bright mind was so, so broken that, that God took him home and had better purposes for him that day. So as much as we were hurting and as much as we were missing, we saw it as a rescue. Kind of like you said, Valerie, earlier. You know, God needed them. These are our kids. Mm -hmm. Never going to understand it this side of heaven. I agree. I didn't really answer your question, Teresa. No, that's fine. No, I asked you if you were angry at God and you said no. I just think it's it's interesting to to get different perspectives because I was very angry at God. He was the only person that I was angry with. So I appreciate your different perspective there, Tanya. What about you, Olga? Did you did you have to manage anger? So I really didn't think about anger, feelings, or emotions before I started to participate in the grief share group where I was invited two years after the crash happened. And this is the first time when we started to discuss anger. And I don't think so. It was a big part of my journey, grief journey. But definitely I had some moments when I just didn't know how to manage my grief, for example. And it was some situation when someone expected some risk extra responsibilities from my side and then my reaction wasn't you know correct or right but I sometimes ask myself would I react in the same way on the same situation before my child passed away and my answer always was no so I realized there's something going on and I just you know went through scriptures and read more about his promises and develop more trust to God and ask him to take all this anger from my heart. And it's helped me so much. Well, and we're going to talk about resources in a little bit, but I want to point out something you said. So it, it, correct me if I'm wrong. Did you say that when you, you didn't realize that you had anger until you went to grief share? Is that what you said? Yes. Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then was it the videos? Or was it being in the groups? Or what it, was it about Grief Share that helped you realize that you did have some anger? Uh, uh, grief Share um, has 13 different weeks and it's 13 different basically topics and lessons. And in the middle of Grief Share program, one session is about anger. 
And I did not real realize that I had it in my heart before we started to talk about it. And I started to listen to others who shared. And I started to think about my own situation, what's going on, and about, you know, myself. And this is the moment when I realized, yes, I definitely have it. Maybe not very intensive like other people had, but it was definitely part of my part of my grief journey. Were you ever angry at God? No, I can relate to Tanya's response. So it was, I wasn't angry. It was just misunderstanding how could it happen. You know, I just, it just understanding differently what's going on, but not anger. I not, think what, not toward. I'm sorry, say that again. I never had anger to God for everything what happened with Pasha. It was just not understanding or misunderstanding how could it happen to our family. And something you said in your video, I, I wanted to kind of bring out because I think it's something common among believers, because you mentioned in your video that you felt like if you did the right things and you serve the Lord, that he would provide that protection. And that really resonated with me, Olga, because that's why I was angry at God. I felt like he had betrayed me. I spent my whole life serving him. I, and it was, I had all my focus on myself and what I felt like I had been betrayed because I felt like he promised physical protection. And where was he? He could have, he didn't in all of our situations, but what he taught me through the deep dive in his word. And I hear this over and over and over guys in, in every one of your stories, I hear this over and over and over. You went to the word of God and that is how he speaks to us. And I hope that people are listening here hear that he speaks to us through his word. And sometimes it's really difficult in the beginning to go to his word because that's, you don't want to talk to him. You know, that's the last place you want to be. It's very difficult to read and comprehend. And that's, I would listen because I couldn't read, but my anger was wrapped around the fact that I felt like that he promised physical protection. When you read the Psalms and you read through that, it's kind of confusing because, well, he promises all this protection, but what he showed me, he took me to Ephesians 1.13. Once I got to the place, and we're going to talk about gratitude next, but once I got to the place where I was teachable, he showed me, listen, I don't promise physical protection. I promise and Ephesians 1.13 says that we are sealed. We are guaranteed with the promise of the Holy Spirit for eternity. So I was like you, Olga, and some of the others have said, I was misinformed. I was interpreting something to be fact that wasn't fact, because then what he taught me was he brought up, he said to me, okay, now I'm going to ask the questions and you're going to answer it. Like he said to Job. And then he took me into his word. And he said to me, how did my disciples die? How did John the Baptist die? So it brought the whole, you know, deep dive into the word for me to see that he provide protection based on his sovereignty. And so I, I love that every single one of you have said that you went to God's word and that's where you found the answers. So thank you guys for being so honest about your anger. If you enjoyed today's show, would you share it with someone that needs to hear a message of hope? Subscribe to the show and leave a review as this will help the podcast reach more of those in need of hope in the midst of grief.